Everybody. Moving on to our next speaker, we have Lizzie Siegel. Lizzie is a developer evangelist at Twilio. And tonight, she'll be presenting to us understanding lane chain agents and tools with Twilio or with SMS. So for all of my LLM people who are here tonight, we got another treat. All right, give it up for Lizzie. <laughs> Forgot I have a clicker. My hands are so cold, it's like stumbling. Oh no, that one. Ah, keyboard. Okay, there we go. Okay. Welcome to Understanding Lane Chain Agents and Tools with Twilio with SMS. Uh, hi, I'm Lizzie. I studied general computer science in college, so I'm just a regular developer who happens to have gained an interest in AI who hasn't this year. Wow, because it's been fun. I haven't coded this much in years. And to quote the Lane Chain founder, co-founder, and CEO, Harrison Chase, in a podcast recently, now's a great time to be a builder. So just let's build. <laughs> okay. Our order of operations, our agenda. Uh, first off, intro to LLM applications, what you can build, what even is Lane Chain? I gave a few talks at like Pi Texas on the OpenAI API, and all these people came up to me and were like, have you used Lane Chain? Have you used Lane Chain? And I was all, no. And now I can tell you that I have. So uh, we'll go over the modules that make up Lane Chain. There'll be some live coding of those modules, so I won't be talking at you the whole time. You will text in to test out the, uh, the model with Twilio. And what's next? There's a lot. What's next? That's, that's next. Grammar is hard. So. Uh, this founding member, research scientist, uh, famous guy at Tesla, he led the computer vision team of Tesla Autopilot. Andre Karpathy said, the hottest new programming language is English. What does he mean? Anyone, anyone, that's kind of rhetorical, yes. Yeah, use, use AI to code. <laughs> use AI to code. Yes, to an extent. But uh, at an AI conference in SF a few months ago, an attendee asked Harrison Chase, the co-founder of Lean Chain, he does a lot, about how to get better output. He was like, yeah, my model is fairly inconsistent. The output is good sometimes, not good some other times. And Harrison said, become better prompt engineers. The better the input to the model, the better the output. And that's where English comes in. Okay. So what takes inputs? Uh, LLMs and LLM applications. And these can include chatbots, virtual assistants. They can be used to automatically generate summaries and synopses of long documents. Um, they could generate articles, blog posts, social media captions. Was that me? Product descriptions um, and more. By training on vast quantities of textual data, these models can capture the style I made a model sound like Clay Thompson. Anyone watch The Warriors? Because he's like a very distinct speaking style, very casual. Tone and structure of different genres and produce contextually relevant content. So what is Lean Chain, which is why we're all here today? Uh, they do not pay me. I just am a big fan. So at its core, Lean Chain is an open source framework. You can find it on GitHub. You can contribute. Lots of people have contributed to it. So this framework is built around LLMs, large language models, that we can use for chatbots, generative question and answering, or GQA, summarization, and so much more. It provides abstractions for working with LLMs, along with a collection of modules for each abstraction. Uh, the CEO builder, Harrison Chase, I think that's the last time I'm gonna mention him. He went, oh, I thought it'd be a animation, different animation I thought. Uh, he went to SFAI meetups and he heard the pain points that developers had when working with LLMs. And he took that to heart and he built Lane Chain to help solve some of those problems. Uh, here's the GitHub repo, make some contributions. 
There it is. He's one of us. That's what I meant. Okay. So, the core idea of lane chain is that we can chain together different components, different model or LLM calls, to create more advanced use cases around LLMs. Chains can consist of multiple components from several modules, which we'll go over. Uh, prompt templates are a way to reproduce, reproducible way to generate prompts uh, to pass into language models. Uh, we have LLMs, you have different LLM providers. So you can easily replace an OpenAI model with Cohere, Hugging Face, et cetera. Uh, chains and agents, different ways of, I guess, who decides uh, what steps to take and when. And we won't dig into memory that much, but you could. That takes more time. That's another talk. Okay. So again, prompts are inputs to the model and are often structured in different ways before presenting themselves to the model so that, so that we can get different results, different output. Lane Chain provides several classes and functions to make constructing and working with prompts easier. A template is reproducible, predefined way to generate prompts, and it can include instructions, few shot examples, where the model looks at examples of what you want the output to be like, and specific context and questions appropriate for a given task. Uh, Lane Train does make it easier to replace different models in your code via abstractions for working with LLMs. The LLM module is simply a wrapper around different LLMs, making it simple for Lane Train developers to communicate with different LLMs using only a single interface without having to worry about the difference between the different LLMs. And as we will see soon, different models give you different outputs. What makes, the, what makes these LLMs different? Different parameters, determining how input data is transformed into the desired output. Accuracy, speed, training, scale, price, and different company missions. While OpenAI's mission is uh, about like making artificial general intelligence or AGI, which is like AI that can surpass or equal human intelligence. Cohere is more focused on fulfilling their customers' technological needs because capitalism. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> I make fun of capitalism, but I benefit from a capitalist, capitalistic society. Anyways. Chains and lane chain, oh, uh, which is where the name comes from, are wrappers around a series of single components, completing predetermined sequence of events that are hard coded in code. Chains break down complex tasks into smaller steps with a series of interconnected components that work together to process user input. The output of one step is passed as input to the next step. Uh, in a basic application, which we'll see soon when I open VS Code. You probably will not need a chain, but more complex applications, you will chain together different calls. And agents are also a type of chain. There's different types of chains as well. LLM chain, which is probably the most basic one. You can chat over docs with chat history in a chain. API chain, so you can interact with like CSVs, different ways of interacting with data or APIs. A lot you can do. So agents are kind of like, and they have complex workflows where the model essentially talks to itself without a human forcing every part of the interaction. They run iteratively with some goals and tasks defined, and it's the LLM, the model, that determines what actions to take and in what order. It's often used to interact with the data sources to assist with problem solving. And agents also have access to memory and tools. Uh, tools are kind of like, well, that's the next slide. <laughs> agents don't know everything. Tools are functions that agents can use to perform different utilities, different tasks. LLMs are not good at math. I built an app to um, help me train for a race, a running race, and I was like, from this day to this day, give me certain output. Give me like a workout for each day. And it could not calculate the number of days between the dates. But it was very confidently incorrect. I had a count, and I was like, it looks right, but not when I count. So there's a tool for that, or you can make one. 
I can program it. And many of these tools can be kind of generic utilities like search. So you can search for things on the internet, like things that happened after 2021, because OpenAI's models were trained on data up to 2021, so they did not know that Taylor Swift had a big concert this year, for example. Uh, yes, and there's other tools for like Zapier to read files, search the web, um, more. Okay. An executor is like an agent with a set of tools. So not every agent has tools, but it could. More specifically, an executor is like a running instance of, of an agent that is used to execute tasks based on the agent's decisions and configured tools. The agents decide what tools to use and the executor executes them. That sounds kind of dark, but okay. So I've been talking a lot. Now I'm going to show you, let's dig into some code. Okay, is this big enough? Okay, okay. so I have OS imported because you're not gonna see my API keys. LMs are gonna use OpenAI at first. Okay, my hands are very cold, so typing could be hard. We make our LLM, AI, and we're gonna pass it an optional parameter temperature. Oy. Temperature is an integer from zero to one, where the lower it is to zero, the less random, the less creative the output will be. But I think we should have some fun, so it can be closer to one, a bit more creative, a bit more unexpected. And then we're going to use, ask, oh, sorry, name. We're gonna ask the LLM a question. This is hard coded. What is a good name for a bike shop with a beach theme? It's been very hot this week, so I've been biking to the beach to stay cool. And let's print out name. Oi. This is a new MacBook and I have not configured some stuff, which is not good, because that's blocking what I want you to see. Okay. We're gonna run this. Blah, 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 blah. So this is with OpenAI. It's suggesting sand and spokes bike shop. Only one, only one recommendation. Let's try Cohere. And it's very easy. We're gonna import Cohere instead. And if this is what I've been seeing, it's gonna be like multiple examples. Okay, Island Cyclery, the bike hut, nice. Now this was hard coded. So let's use some prompt templates. So we can generate prompts that can be reproducible. Oi. Okay. Now we're going to do what all good programmers do, which is copy and paste code. I'm having trouble typing, my hands are still cold. Which is weird, because like it's been so hot this week. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Oh, yeah. I also don't have pockets, so that might be affecting some of what you hear. Make our prompt template, pass it, template. And an array, I cannot type. You can probably guess what these input variables, oh, I forgot to change this. Instead of bike, we're gonna have type. And beach is going to be theme. So we can replace these with different values. So we have type, which could be bike shop. And we have theme, which could be beach. It could also be Taylor Swift, Warriors, basketball, etc. I cannot type. Ay Follows prompt template. Oi. Oh, that's an array. Okay. Oh no, thank you. Sorry, my mouse is not doing that well. It's theme. Yes. Okay. And if we run that again. That should be, what's the name for a 
That's just the prompt. Sorry, my mouse isn't mousy that well. Oh, we could format that. Sorry, my keyboard's not like it should be. Okay, dot format. Uh, but, but, uh, we have theme. Let's pass it bike. That have to be type. Oi. Why? This is not very fast. Oh. Sorry, my keyboard's not usually like this. Neither is that mouse. Okay, anyways, I'm gonna move on. It'll be type and theme, but it's very slow. And that would put in bike into type and beef into theme. Oh my gosh, sorry. Laptop not doing that well. Where did the mouse go? Oh, okay. 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 Oh. This did not happen when I was rehearsing. There's a mouse over there. Um, I didn't spill anything on my laptop, mouse, but it's not. mouse it's moving weirdly wipe it down cursor the cursor is the mouse is moving weirdly oddly it's here but it's not there as much okay okay oh That moved a lot. God, seriously. Okay. 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 Uh, technical difficulties. Gonna move back to the slides. That. Okay. Good theme. That. <sighs> no slides. Good thing I have the code here. LM. Okay. Prompt template. That was slow. Prompt template with the input variables, type and theme, formatted. But that's not a call to the LLM. So. We need to pass it to an LM chain. Import lanesy.chains and LM chain. Pass it to LM and a prompt. And then run type bike theme beach. And that would recommend Seabreeze bikes. And that would be different for Cohere versus OpenAI. And then you could easily say, I want a basketball shop with a Taylor Swift theme, Warriors theme, whatever. And that's why I use prompt templates because you can easily change out the prompt. And here is agents, a bit smaller. You create a tools array, because LMs are bad at math. We use the LM math tool. You can make your own custom one if you wanted to calculate the days between two dates or other utilities. And then you initialize the agent with tools, LLM, the agent type. This is zero shot React description. Zero shot meaning the model has not seen any prior examples. Uh, React is like a framework that decides what tools to use. And agents are riskier, because you don't know what is thinking, I guess, behind the scenes. 
But if you do set verbose equal to true, when you create the agent, then you enter the chain, and then you can kind of see some of, the, some of its thought process. Oh. So difference between chain and agent. You can think of a chain as infrastructure or tooling, a sequence of actions that are hard-coded in code. An agent is a worker with utilities, tools, and it's an unknown chain that depends on the user's input and the model has more say in the output. So some audience participation. You can get out your phones and text some of what we saw by texting this number. And that's the only pitch of this whole talk. Tulio provides APIs for communication and customer engagement. And in this case, text messaging is a means of prompting the model. Okay, so 855-302-1845. Again, that's 855-302-1845. Uh, and we are moving on because we have two minutes. So why should you use LaneShade? Like APIs, it makes your life easier. It abstracts away some of the more uh, low weeds, or what's the word, low level, AI concepts. It makes it easier to build apps around LLMs and to call different LLMs. Mainchain lets you connect LLMs to other sources of data, like maybe your workout data on Strava, an Excel spreadsheet, Airtable. And this is important because LLMs can only access the information contained on the data sets it's trained on. So by giving LLMs access to other sources of data, you can give them access to a wider range of information. And we're all in this together. We're all learning together in this community. Uh, there's lots of tutorials, and these you can see these slides later. Unlock um, community is great. Dev.to, the Lane Chain docs. I do go into the GitHub repo sometimes because they make so many updates, so many changes, so often. Sometimes they get a bug, and there's no other similar bug on Stack Overflow. Go into the code. Uh, here's a course, lots of fun. The link will be shown next. And this is kind of like a new frontier. Lots happening in AI, lots with Python. Most AI library support is in Python. And thank you, you can find me online at Lizzie Pika. Here are the slides, my email, and a promo code for Twilio. Thank you. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Lizzie? All right. Uh, hey, Lizzie. Um, I'm a big fan of Langchain, actually. And I've been using Langchain with Lama Index. And the temperature field, which we uh, configure there, that's for the affinity of the embeddings, right? Mm -hmm. Don't you think it's very abstract to control the affinity of the embeddings? Because I've been stuck in a problem where the LLM did not give me a right result, and playing around with the temperature still didn't solve me a problem. So don't you think like we need to have more uh, uh, like control over the embedding's affinity more than the temperature because that's a single field? That's a big complaint of lane shade. So this summer, people were like, Lizzie, you need to use lane shade. Stop using the OpenAI API. And lane shade was very popular. And then I think in the recent months, recent weeks, people have been complaining about how you don't know what's happening under the hood. You have like less visibility. And I think they're changing that with LaneSmith, uh, the recent observability platform. LaneSmith, L-A-N-G-S-M-I-T-H. Uh, you can sign up for beta access, I believe, on their website. So they are addressing those concerns. And I think AI in general, you don't really know what's happening under the hood, but that's a trade-off of you not needing a PhD or grad school to train your own model. You can still fine tune easily. Uh, there's trade-offs, but that is a major complaint. I've seen on Reddit, Hacker News, I think, this one blog post took off on like something about like why I don't like lane shade and like people like I, I lost my hackathon because of that. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I won a hackathon because of lane shade. <laughs> I tried to, but yeah, because oh. of that. <laughs> there are trade-offs, and I think that kind of comes down to it depends on as most programmers know, yeah. All right, any additional questions? We have time for about one more. All right. 
Yeah, thanks for the talk. Um, in the in the example that you showed with the agent type that was using the, I think, a calculator tool, mm -hmm. do you just create the agent and then tell it what tool it should use and then it'll decide when to use that tool or do you also have to give it some specifications about when it should use that tool? That's the thing as well with zero shot React. React is the framework that determines when to use the tool or to what tool to use. In this case, there was only one tool it could use. You have to like explicitly, explicitly say you have access to these tools. And with the agent, you can sometimes print out and be like, okay, so this is the step where it should have used this tool, but it used this, or it didn't use any tool. Uh, so I feel like I, you could probably prompt engineer and be like, use this tool for something. But that's a workaround. Yeah. When in doubt, use prompting for better output. Yeah. Right. Give it up for Lizzie, everybody.